Unfortunately, Zhao's demise in Netflix's live-action Avatar, The Last Airbender suggests that any callback to his fate in a potential Legend of Korra adaptation by Netflix is unlikely. While it could be argued that the ocean spirit took Zhao's body after Iroh's attack, the clear depiction of Zhao's dead body makes this scenario less plausible. Thus, it seems Zhao's death in the live-action series will be more conclusive compared to the original Nickelodeon cartoon. Kindly. Like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Showrunner Albert Kim was well aware of the immense challenge ahead of him. He certainly knew what pitfalls to avoid. Renowned horror director M. Sunite Shyamalan's attempt at The Last Airbender in his 2010 film was heavily criticized for whitewashing and subpar special effects. Kim was determined to rectify those mistakes. My first thought after, yes, was, wow, do I really want to take this on? He shared with Entertainment Weekly. Is there a way to make it even better than the original? When you're tackling something cherished by millions of fans, you have to consider these questions. Kim condensed the original animated series 20 half-hour episodes into eight-hour-long live-action episodes for Netflix. Despite the compression, the first season maintains the core storyline. Ong travels the world, forging friendships and seeking guidance from past avatars. Meanwhile, adversaries threaten him at every turn. The Fire Nation, led by Lord Ozai, played by Daniel Day Kim, dispatches his son Prince Zuko, portrayed by Dallas Liu, to capture the Avatar. Yet, as the series unfolds, Zuko begins to question his allegiance to his nation and his role in the war. Making a live-action version of Avatar, The Last Airbender is super tough, like way harder than mastering Earth, water, fire, and air. But guess what? Netflix decided to give it a shot. Now, Netflix hasn't always nailed it with adaptations. Just think about the not-so-great responses to their takes on Cowboy Bebop, Death Note, and One Piece. But they're not backing down. Even though One Piece got a whopping 37.8 million views in just two weeks after it dropped, Netflix still believes fans will be hyped for their Avatar version. Their plan this time around was simple keep the vibe of the original Nickelodeon show intact. The story revolves around a kid named Aang, played by Gordon Cormier. He lives in a world where bending elements is a normal thing. Most folks can bend one element, water, fire, earth, or air, but Aang learns he's the Avatar, who can bend all four. After accidentally snoozing for a century, he wakes up to a world ruled by the Fire Nation. With his pals, he's on a mission to bring balance back to the world. Admiral Zhao, the primary antagonist of The Last Airbender Season 1, met his end in a significant turn of events. His demise is intriguing because it diverged from the expected storyline of the season's finale. Instead, addressing a subplot that had been somewhat overlooked in earlier episodes. Before delving into Zhao's fate, it's crucial to understand his strategy for attacking the Northern Water Tribe. Prior to his assault, Zhao consulted with a fire sage who provided him with information about the spirits in the Avatar world, which are central to the franchise's mythology and likely to remain significant in future seasons. Zhao discovered that the ocean and moon spirits, particularly the latter, which empowers waterbenders, manifest physically at the North Pole. He aimed to eliminate the moon spirit to cripple waterbending abilities and ensure the success of his siege. Throughout the first season, the rivalry between Zuko and Zhao intensified, leading to an attempted assassination by Zhao on Zuko's life. This animosity between them played a crucial role in the unfolding events. In Netflix's adaptation of The Last Airbender, Zhao manages to achieve his goal of attacking the Northern Water Tribe and then tries to make a quick exit. However, Prince Zuko catches up with him as he's leaving Angachela. Throughout the first season, Zuko and Zhao's rivalry escalates to the point where Zhao even attempts to kill Zuko. In their final showdown, Zuko emerges victorious in a duel with Zhao. But just as Zhao tries to strike Zuko from behind, Zuko's uncle, Iro, intervenes and ultimately ends Zhao's life with a blast of fire. Interestingly, Netflix's version changes Zhao's fate from the original series. 
In the original show, Zhao's demise is left somewhat ambiguous, with the ocean spirit targeting him specifically, dragging him into the depths, leaving his fate uncertain. Both versions, however, share the event where the moon spirit's death prompts Ong to ally with the ocean spirit, leading to a climactic confrontation with the Fire Nation. For many years, fans speculated about Zhao's fate, with some assuming he perished at the hands of the ocean spirit. This speculation persisted until The Legend of Korra, the sequel series, aired nearly a decade later. In The Legend of Korra, it's revealed that Zhao was taken by the ocean spirit to the fog of lost souls, where he is condemned to relive his darkest memories for eternity. The animated series has a great strength in creating a big, detailed world. The live-action version takes advantage of this by adding more to the Avatar universe, like giving the characters and cultures more depth. Fans watching the live-action might find themselves in unfamiliar territory, wondering where the cartoon ends and the live-action begins. The actors chosen and their performances in the live-action show blur the lines between the two versions. Even though the animated characters are well-known and loved, the live-action brings a new perspective to them. How the characters are portrayed adds to the question of where the live action really stops. Moving from animation to live action means changes in how things look and are presented. For example, the bending sequences, where characters control elements like water or fire, look different in the live action version. These changes in appearance make people wonder if the live action show is separate from the animated one, or just a different way of telling the story. The first season of the Avatar live-action series captures the essence of the animated show well, staying true to the original material. But as fans watch, they notice differences and new parts that make them wonder, where does the live-action end and the cartoon begin? Exploring the live-action world lets viewers see the small differences and enjoy the timeless story in a new way, keeping the magic alive from the original series. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check other videos on this channel.